So anyway, Father, thank you today for your word. Thank you for the worship today. How many enjoyed the worship today, the praise? It just shifted a little bit, did a little bit different, right? Thank you for the praise and worship. Thank you for the willing vessels that are willing to sing, Lord, and lead us in worship and praise this morning. Now, Father, I just pray because I know I have a word from the Lord. And I'm going to stop telling them, people during the week, what I'm going to preach on because you always have a way of changing after the last minute. Then they're going to be like, Pastor Ben, you lie. You said you were going to preach on joy. But Father, thank you, God, that we hear a word from you today. And Father, I pray that you would use me to speak it the way you want and the people will be full and receive and leave out of here, God, just blessed from your words. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. With me real quick, and we're going to read. It's going to be good today because it ain't me. It's what the Holy it's what my message is at home. This Holy Spirit is saying, and it just goes right along with, tags along with last week's message about open doors. Okay? Watch. Just follow me today. So here we are, Deuteronomy chapter 1. We're going to do chapter 1. I'm sorry, I said chapter 4. We are going to get over to 4 before it's over with. But let's start with Deuteronomy chapter 1. Look at somebody say, it's going to be good today. Oh, slobbing at the mouth. Can't wait to get it. Deuteronomy chapter 1, and I'm going to read the first eight verses. So just hang in there. We got to listen because when you read the Old Testament, it's hard to read one verse in the middle and understand the story because Old Testament is stories. Okay? So we got to read, um, you know, we got to read. Deuteronomy chapter 1, 1 through 8. These are the words which Moses spoke to all Israel on this side of the Jordan in the wilderness. Okay? In the plain opposite Suf, between Paran, Tophel, and Laban, and Hazaroth, and Dizahab. Don't you love them names? Don't y'all name one of y'all kids one of these names, how pastors stumbling over trying to pronounce their name. Verse 2, it is 11 days' journey from Horeb by way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. 11 days' journey. Now it came to pass in the 40th year, (laughs) in the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spoke to the children of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him as commandments to them. Verse 4, after he had killed Sion, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon, and Og, king of Bashan, who dwelt in Ashtaroth, in Edri. On this side of the Jordan in the land of Moab, Moses began to explain this law, saying, the Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb, Mount Horeb. Some pronounce it Oreb. Saying, you have dwelt long enough at this mountain. You've been at this mountain long enough. Look at somebody say, you've been at this mountain long enough. Verse 7, turn and take your journey, go to the mountains of the Amorites, to all the neighboring places in the plain, in the mountains and in the lowland and in the south and on the seacoast, to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. Verse 8, now this is, this is going to hit home right here. See... I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them and to their descendants after them. Verse 8, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. So today I want to talk to you from the, from the title, Possess Your Promise. Possess Your Promise. So we've been discussing Open Door for 2024, right? And God is downloading into us right now what this actually looks like. So I'm excited. You know, the word of God comes and the word of God says, 
you're going to see exponential growth in 2024. I'm going to bring some family members to the Lord in 2024. I'm going to answer some prayers for you in 2024. I'm opening doors for you that no man can shut. And we're all excited about that. And so now we're, yes, praising God for the word of God, but now God is downloading into us what the word means. Like, what does that really mean? What does that look like? And how do we go about walking through the open door for 2024? In Proverbs, I believe it's chapter 4, verse 7, it says, um, get, uh, wisdom is a principal thing, so get wisdom. But then in all you're getting, get an understanding, right? So wisdom, you can't see results without wisdom. And wisdom is what comes from God, and that means God gives you not only the know, he gives you the how, but the most importantly, the wisdom is the application. When to do it, how to do it, with who to do it with, what not to do it. You know, you apply something at the right time, with the right people, at the right place, and you will get results. So he says, get wisdom, because that's the first thing, that's the chief thing, that's the most important thing. But with, with that application, get in all you're getting, get an understanding. That's important because the understanding is the process. The understanding, it helps you to appreciate the results. <laughs> Sister Jacqueline is doing the play Black Butterfly right now, and she's teaching our community about the achievements and about the true uh, identity of, uh, of, of, of black Americans or African Americans. And she mentions in the school scene the verse that says, and all that getting, get an understanding. We know what we need to do in our community, but that's the wisdom and know how to apply what needs to change. We just don't do it. But it helps us to go back and understand the process of how we got where we at from a true perspective. So it's just, we can give you the answers of what you need to do, but it's important that we know how the process, how we got here, what, what has happened up till now. It makes us appreciate and understand. It helps us in order to bring us to the end that God wants us to get to. The wisdom is me knowing how to turn the clock on and tell time, but the understanding is me knowing how that clock works. And so he says, get wisdom, because you need that more than anything, because that's the result. But in all you're getting, also get an understanding. You understand the process. You can appreciate it. it you, you can explain it. You can help somebody get where they need to go from where they've been and where they are. And so God is telling us, get an understanding. When I talk about open, under, open doors, I want you to get an understanding. I want you to understand what an open door is. I want you to understand the possession of your promise. I want you to look and I want you to learn what I'm talking about because it's going to help you to go through your door in 2024. And so he's going to have us today look at, and I love this, he's going to have us look at history. He's going to have us to go back and look at some people who were called God's people like we were. <laughs> And we're going to look at them, and we're going to look at their experience, and we're going to look at where he had taken them and how they were able to advance to something greater. We're going to look at how they were delivered from the enemy while they were in a wilderness place. And it's going to help us to get to our promise. It's going to help us to go through our door. Romans 15 and 4 says it this way, for whatsoever things were written aforetime, they were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So we get to look at what has been written. And so I think the best way for me to explain this is gonna be a teaching lesson, is for me to use the board today. And I think the, the, the board is gonna really help us because I want to explain the journey or the process of God's people. And I think it's really going to hit home to us today. Now, what color should I use? Let me go ahead. We'll start with red. So we're going to start over here with... Um,
Egypt. Okay? And uh, so we're going to put this here. I'm going to make sure I have enough room to make it all the way to the end. And we're going to put another line here. And we're going to put Red Sea here. Okay? So we got Egypt. We got the Red Sea. And now we have the wilderness. <laughs> we need a lot of room for the wilderness because we need 40 years worth of room for the wilderness, right? And so uh, we're going to keep this wilderness going until we get to, let's see, here. And uh, gosh, help me. Uh, Y'all, that's mountains. Just, just excuse me, all right? Okay, that's mountains. <laughs> And then that's, the, that's valley, right? We got some valleys here. And then we got the Jordan River right about here. And we have the promise, promised land here. Okay. So we're, the journey that God's people had to take was they had to leave this place called Egypt, right? in bondage, and they had to get all the way over here to the promised land. That was God's promise to the people. And so here we see God's salvation. I'm going to change the color. Here we see God's salvation. Okay? And then here we see, especially right here at the Red Sea, where they crossed the Red Sea, we see God's deliverance. And then in the wilderness, immediately when they made it on the other side of the Red Sea, you saw praise. After you saw praise, you saw testing. <laughs> After you saw testing, you saw, this is a long word, are sort of at the same time, but you saw supernatural provision. All this was happening in the wilderness. After supernatural provision, you saw worship, even though it wasn't always the worship of God. And then you saw preparation. And I want to go through this because it's really going to help us to get to the promise. Okay, this is God's promise. So let's, let's walk through this because this is important. So God delivers his people, and I want you to connect it to our own salvation. God saves us from bondage. God sets us free from the place where we were in bondage, we were in debt, we were being taken advantage of, we were being raped by the enemy, right? He said, how many so glad they had experienced salvation? How many so glad God saved them? God saved them. He saved them out of their bondage, and then he delivered them from the hand of the enemy. He brought them across the Red Sea, delivering when the enemy was after him, them. He delivered them from the enemy. How many glad you've been delivered from the enemy? The enemy been after you ever since you was little, but God delivered you from the enemy's grasp. He wouldn't let you get taken over by the enemy. So, so they experienced salvation from bondage. They experienced deliverance from the enemy. And then as soon as they get on the other side of the Red Sea, in the wilderness area, just beginning, Miriam grabs her tamarind and they start rejoicing. They start singing and they start praising the Lord and thanking him for all that he had brought them out of, for saving them and for delivering them because that's what we do when we've been saved and delivered. We immediately say, like, Lord, thank you. Thank you, God for saving me. Thank you, God, for delivering me, Lord. See, y'all don't, see, we can, people who've been addicted to something can praise the Lord. People who've been through something can really praise the Lord. People who know they should have died can really praise the Lord. God, you saved my life. 
God, he saved my life. He delivered me from some things. I can't tell you what they are because y'all look at me wrong. But he delivered me from some things that I couldn't shake myself. He saved me, he delivered me, and now he put me on the right path to get me to his promise. And now here, as soon as I step over from the deliverance of my enemies and from the salvation from bondage, and I begin to praise God and, and praise him. And it's, see, it's good if, 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 if right after he saved me, and right after he delivered me, and I was praising God, it, it would have been nice if he just took me home. Like I told you before, the old saints, when I was growing up, used to say, you know, give your life to Jesus and everything's going to be all right. They lied. Yes. Because as soon as I gave my life to Jesus, all hell broke loose. The battle, the struggle, the heartache, the pain, the temptations, the devil came with and his demons and every spirit that he could, in this world did everything they could to try to smother me and drown me and take me out. And the praise is good initially. But the, the issue is, we still got a long way to go. So my praise, most people's praise lasts right after the deliverance. And after that, they don't do no more praising. Because after the praise come the testing. <laughs> I'll praise you when everything was all right, when I saw you deliver me, when I saw you save me, and thank you for everything you've done. But now I forgot all about that. Right now I'm going through. I'm being tested. I'm being tried. It's not fair what's happening to me. I don't understand why this is happening to me. I don't understand why nothing is changing. I don't like the place I'm in. When am I going to get out of this place? I can't shake some things. I can't sleep at night. I'm, I make three steps forward. I'm three steps back. I'm tired. Anybody ever been tired? I know I'm supposed to praise you, but I don't feel like it. I don't, sometimes I don't feel like I have it in me to praise you anymore, God. What's going on? Praise you, but now I'm in the testing season. And God purposely causes this testing season and allows it in everybody's life because, see, it's, 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 it's surface when I just praise him for what he's done. He's trying to take me on a journey and get me to a, a greater place, not just some surface thing. And so he allows the testing because he wants to see where your allegiance really is. To see if you'll still praise him and glorify him and magnify him and exalt him even in the wilderness. Even after what he's done has been done and years have passed and you don't see anything, you don't see any new, you don't see any fruition, you don't see any fulfillment and he's got you in this season and you're wondering, God, what happened? <laughs> see, if we possessed our, if I could just squeeze this down right down by here and get my salvation and my deliverance, get my praise on, and then come into the promise. That's what I want. Why the promise got to be all the way over here? I want the promise here after my praise. God, those are peas. Put them together, Lord. But no, you got to put that test in. The, 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 so I got to see God said, no, no, the praise was good. Thank you, for, but I need to get you deeper. I need greater roots in you. Uh, God, this is so, I'm, I can't jump ahead of myself. I got to get something deeper in you. I got to get you to a place where you truly trust me. See, you still in the wilderness, you still in the, because you still learning to trust me. I'm testing you, but right now in your wilderness, you're testing me. You still wondering, do I love you? That, we should, that should have been a bygone. I saved you. I delivered you. I chose you. I didn't have to. But you here in the wilderness, after all I did, and you still wondering, do I really love you? 
You still wondering, am I, am I, am I going to provide for you? Come on now. I don't know if you're going to provide for me. I don't know if you're going to make a way for me. You still in the doubting, you still fearful, you're still questioning my leadership. You're still wondering, should you go back to the place that you didn't like, but it was familiar and comfortable? <laughs> That's why we gotta go through this test in time, because we gotta get you right. We gotta help you Because you're in this place where you're still, you don't know whether you want to fight or not. Because to get to your promise, you're going to have to fight. And you're saying here, I'm tired of fighting, God. I'm just tired of fighting. I got to get you in this place to a place where you're not tired of fighting. Where you're not tired of just living. Just enough. So in this place, while you're going through the testing and you're questioning in God and you're wondering if God really said what he said and what happened to that prophecy pastor gave me and what's going on and why things not working out and, and, and Lord, where are you? And while you're walking through and going through all of that, God says, that's okay, I'm going to let you go ahead and test me and question me just like the children of Israel did and I'm, because I'm going to show you my love in the middle of you still questioning me and wondering if I love you and testing me and wondering if I'm there for you. I'm going to supernaturally provide for you in the midst of your questioning, in the midst of your wondering. I'm still your God. You still my people. You still my bride. I'm still your husband. I chose you. I'm not going to leave you nor forsake you. Even if you question me, I'm not going to stop being God. Even if you stop being faithful, I'm still faithful because that's who I am. So here we are in the wilderness, supernatural provision God is providing for the people. They're in a place of survival. This is the place of promise. This is a place of uh, moving forward. This is the place of abundance. But right now in the wilderness, it's a place of survival. (laughs) We're in a place of survival. It's a place where God was making a way for them just to meet their daily needs. Hand to mouth is what we call it, right? (laughs) Just enough to get through, just enough to pay that bill, just to eat, just to get through the day. They're in the supernatural, they're in the wilderness, their daily needs. It's the place where God kept providing a miracle. Because they needed a miracle. God, what we gonna eat? We ain't got no meat. We ain't had no meat in a long time. Oh, in the days in Egypt, I remember when we barbecued that pig, boy, I tell you. We ain't had no meat in a long time, God, you, what, what? Okay, fine, y'all ain't had no meat. That's easy for me to do. I'll just send some quail your way. God, we ain't got no water. I mean, I'm thirsty. Moses, you, God brought us out here to kill us. It's dry in this wilderness. It's dry. Where, where is the? And so God said, no problem. If I got to bring it out of a rock, I'll bring some water for you. We ain't got no bread. What are we going to eat? I'll send it from heaven for you. It's called manna. I gotta supernaturally provide for you. I'm gonna protect you. I'm gonna keep your clothing from wearing out during the time you're in this wilderness season. I'm gonna supernaturally provide for you, even though you don't trust me, even though you're doubting me, even though you're wondering what I did, even though you've seen all of the plagues and everything I did. You saw how I opened up the Red Sea. Here you are still. I saved you, I delivered you, and you still questioning me, but that's okay. I'm gonna show you I'm God. I'm still God. I'm God when you see me, and I'm God when you don't. I'm God when you see what I do, and I'm God when you don't see what I'm doing. Because I got to bring you to this place. Oh, God. 
I got to bring you to worship. See, you wasn't worshiping here. You were just praising. Remember, we talked about the difference between praise and worship. Praise is where we're just telling God, thank you for what you've done. But now worship is telling God, thank you for who you are. And, 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 and I had to become the bread of life. I had to become the water, and I had to become the rock, and I had to become Jehovah Jireh, and I had to become Jehovah Nisi, and I had to become Jehovah Shama, the God is there, so that you can understand who I am, and you can worship me according to who I am, not just according to what I do. Right, I, I couldn't bring you to a place of worship until you understood who I was. And I had to do these things during your wilderness season for you to see who I am. So God wants us to thank him for all that he's done and worship him for who he is. And so after he brings him to this place and he says you're supposed to be worshiping and we know the story that Moses went to go get the the law from God for the people, and then they stopped worshiping God for a moment after they had committed and said, we were going to worship God. And promise Moses, this is what we did. We're going to worship God. We're going to worship God. He did too much for us. We're going to worship God. And then Moses got up there, and he was too long, and they started questioning again. Well, what, where are you at? Well, and then they, 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 they pushed Aaron, who was left in charge. <laughs> you got to be careful who you leave in charge. They left Aaron and and the people talked him into making a golden calf and worshiping the golden calf. God did all of that to bring you to a place of worshiping him. And you, you, you go through all of that and you say, well, just like that, we're not going to worship God. We're just going to worship something else, something we can see, something we can feel, something that, that, we can identify with something that's made in our image. Because you got a lot of churches today, they worship in God, a God who they've made in their image. They are not worshiping the God of heaven and earth, the creator of everybody, the one who created the world through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They're not worshiping that God. They are worshiping a God made in their image. Fashion and formed. See, my God allows me to be able to sleep with the same sex. See, my God allows me to be able to do this on the weekend. See, my God allows me to be able to do this. And my God allows me, and this is the kind of God I want to serve. They have formed their own calf. They're worshiping their own God. And, and, and so they're supposed to be worshiping God, and this is the goal. God wants to bring them to a place to understand who he is. He even took out the time to talk to his people and, 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 and put the fear of God in them. And it, and it bothered them so much when they heard his voice that they said, Moses, you talk to him and then tell us what he said. We don't want to talk to him ourselves. He was trying to bring them to a place where they understood who they were dealing with. Who God truly is. God in all of his power. And, and, and so they're trying to bring him to a place of worship. And so from that place of worship, while they were supposed to be worshiping God, God sends the man of God to the top of the mountain to receive the instructions and the directions for how they should live. It's getting good, y'all. We ain't got good yet. It's going to get good to give them instruction for how they are supposed to walk, how they are supposed to carry themselves, how they are supposed to be as his people, because he's about to bring them into the promise. And guess what? You're thinking, God, how come my promise wasn't over there? God says, if I had brought you into your promise here, you would have got kicked out of your promise. Because you can't enjoy or handle what I have for you until you go through the process and you're prepared. It was his mercy, it was his grace, it was his love for you that allowed you to go through the wilderness and allowed you to get to firm up your faith and figure out who God was, figure out who you are, so that when you come into your promise, you don't miss it, you don't get in it for a short time and then you're out again, but that you have it for everlasting possession. So Moses is going up to get what's needed to prepare the people for the promise. 
He's going up to the mountain to get the instructions, to get the laws, to get the commands that's going to teach them how God wants them to live their lives. Because if they live their lives according to the way God wants them to live them in the promise, they will always be in the promise and they will never find themselves again outside of the promised land. So God has to get his man of God up there to to get the instructions for the preparation process to show the people how to be sanctified and set apart and holy and consecrated and different so that they can dwell in the land of promise. They got to be ready for their place of promise. Before the Lord takes us into possession, he teaches us so that we will remain in the land that he gives us and we'll never be moved out by ourselves, our enemies, or anybody else. God does not want want us to have something that we can't keep. He don't want us to have a promise that he gave us for a moment. He wants the promise to be a lifetime possession, not a short-term temporary thing. He wants it to truly be a blessing, a wealth enough for the rest of your life. But he's got to teach us what to do and how to do so that we know how to handle our possession of promise. He says, I didn't bring you into your promise to evict, to evict you. Now watch this. He also says, look at it from this point. I didn't bring you into a land where I'm removing people and putting you in their place. In other words, he said, I'm not bringing you into a land where I removed abominable people doing doing abominable things, removed them out of the land to move you in the land for you to be abominable and do abominable things. Why would I replace abominations with abominations? Why would I replace an unclean, a paganistic, those who don't fear God, don't love God, why would I remove them and put you in their place and you're going to do the same thing? So I got to prepare you so that you don't end up like them getting evicted and kicked out of the land. Is anybody getting anything this morning? If you, if I was just going to let you in, like some people preaching that cheap gospel, you can do anything. If I'm going to let you in the promise just doing any old thing, <laughs> then I should have left you over here and left the original people to stay in there. Because to possess your promise means that You have to dispossess somebody else. To to possess your promise means that you are taking the place of another. Remember last week we talked about the key of David in Isaiah 22, uh, I think in 22, and uh, in in that particular passage it was talking about a replacement, a removal of one king for another king, and the key was given to the new king to be able to unlock and he told them this new king that has been replaced the old king, this is the one I'm opening the door for that nobody can shut, right? So God is taking us into the promise and we have the keys that he's given us to to go into that promise and it's not the same as who was in the promise before. You gotta replay, God said you gotta, I'm dispossessing them. Right? And so he brings them finally into the promise. And when he brings them into the promise after the preparation, right? And he had to give them the laws and teach them the laws. And then what he had to do, make sure all the ones who just refused to believe die in this wilderness. So that the new ones who didn't not believe him, Joshua generation could go into the promise. Now, he gave them, I call it, the land of the ites. The ites. You finna replace the ites. You finna dispossess the ites. You finna kick out the ites. You finna kill all the ites. You finna take their land because I gave you their land. You get the land of the ites. What, what are you talking about, Pastor? You know the ites, the Amorites, the Jebusites, the Canaanites. 
The ites. I'm giving you the ites. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm about to get the ites. That promise is amazing. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, I got to start closing this up. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 19 through 21. So we departed from Horeb, and we went all through all that great and terrible witness which you saw on the way to the mountains of the Amorites. Y'all forgive me for my mountains today. To the mountains of the Amorites, as the Lord our God had commanded us. Then we came to Kadesh Barnea, and I said to you, you have come to the mountains of the Amorites. So Kadesh Barnea is right on the edge of about to go in over the Jordan into the land. I brought you to the mountains of, of, of the Amorites, which the Lord God has given. You have come, which the Lord God has given us. Look, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Okay, the land's before you. Go up and possess it as the Lord God of your fathers has spoken to you. Do not fear or be discouraged. Now watch this, because this is important for you to go through your open door in 2024. This is so important. Watch this. The man of God says, look what God says to you. Look, the Lord has set the land before you. You get here, the land is before you. How could they see the land? They, they could go up to the mountains and they could look and they can see the land. Better than that, we find out in the story that this is where the spies went. The spies went up on these mountains, and then they came down here to the valley of Koresh. And then through the valley, they came into the promised land. They grabbed some fruit and some other things to bring back to the people to show them that indeed the land the Lord God wants to give us is flowing with milk and honey, and it's a good land, all right? But they're right here on the edge, okay? And so Moses said, look, the Lord has given you the land. Go possess it as the Lord God of your father has spoken to you. Do not fear or be discouraged. You know what? When they heard that, they should have moved to go possess the land. Yeah. Moses said, go look. This, the instructions was go. Go possess your land. Go. Now watch their response. This is important. This is going to help us. Verse 22. And every one of you, after I said that, came near to me and said, let us send men before us and let them search out the land for us and bring back word to us by, of the way by which we should go up and of the cities in which we shall co come. God said, go possess your land, and then you tell God, okay, God, before I move on that and possess my land, what I want to do, I got an idea, God, I got... I got some things that I, 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 want, I want to send some people over there first. I want them to check some things out. I'm going. I'm going for sure. I'm going. I'm, I'm going into the land. They said, they told, because that's what they said. They said, we just check them out. They're just checking out the land, but we are going to go. That's what they told Moses. We going to go. We coming into the land regardless. We just want them to go check some things out. And Moses said, oh, he was, the Bible said Moses was pleased. Like, good, they're going to follow God. They're going to go, they're going to go into the land. But first they want to just, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, we'll send some men over there to go check it out. He, he's not thinking this is unbelief. He's not thinking that this is a symptom of delay, procrastination, uh, of not moving into possess your land, but, but trying to wait, make little excuses, trying to wonder, overthinking, intellectual, get in the way, and, and yeah, I'm working out, yeah, I'm going, God, I'm going, but you know, I, let's, let's do this first, and let's do this second, and let's do this third. So here's the point that God wants us to see in this story. He told me to tell you, stop letting the devil trick you out of your inheritance by delaying what you are supposed to do with your overthinking and relying on your intellectual planning. I don't know who that's for today. God's saying, possess your promise and go. I've opened the door for you. Possess it. Go. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. And instead, you set things up to make you afraid and to make you discouraged. God help us. And the enemy is using this so he can get you to get nothing done and never get into the place that God 
wants to take you into. This one thing became their, their undoing. This one thing kept them out of the promise. Because these men went, came back with proof, this is a good place. The Lord says yes. Nevertheless, however, it's too much for us. They, they got people over there that's taller. They, they got people over there that's greater. The, the, the cities are fortified. Oh, and the giants live there. We saw giants over there. And as soon as they got that report, they forgot all about what God had told them. To go possess the land, don't fear, don't get discouraged. Had they moved when God told them to move, they wouldn't have ended up doing what they did, getting that bad report, and then believing that, and crying and saying, oh, God delivered us just to kill us. Where are we going to go now? We're stuck in the wilderness. We can't do nothing. We can't go back and we can't go forward. Their own brethren, oh God, I'm preaching today. Their own brethren discouraged them. If you got some brothers and some sisters that you align to and they are going to give you a report that's not the report of the Lord or what God told you, please don't listen to them. Your own brother discouraged their hearts with an evil report and they begin to focus on what the enemy looked like. And they begin to size up whether they were really able to do what God told them to do. I don't think I'm big enough to fight. I don't think I'm smart enough to fight. I don't think I'm strong enough to fight. I don't think I'm courageous enough to fight. I don't think I have what it, it takes. I, I don't think I have the goods when God told you to go possess your promise. I got to finish. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and 3, I'm just going to combine that. They pass through this territory. They're still on this side, and they still got a little bit more. to pass through the territory of your brethren. But he says to them, but watch yourselves carefully. The people that you're passing through are going to be afraid of you. So they're passing through where the descendants of Esau are and the Moabites are. He said, the people are going to be afraid. Don't fight with them. You can buy from them. You can drink. But I don't want you to really fight with them. I don't want you to get caught up in them because this is not the land I'm giving you. This is the promise land I'm giving you. That, that, them people, don't worry about them. They, they, just, just go through and don't, don't trip. He says, make sure that, that you, 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 you understand that I gave this land to the descendants of Esau. So you're not to take anything from there. This other land, he says, I gave those to the descendants of Lot. So as you're on your way, you're going to walk through some places. They're going to be afraid of you. Don't meddle with them. Don't mess anything. Just, let, just go on your way and go to your promise. Don't get caught up in what somebody else is doing. Go to your promise because and, and, you can't take their promise because I already made a promise to Lot that he has his land. And I already made a promise to Esau that his descendants are going to have this land. So, so don't take land that don't belong to you. That's the second point God says. Make sure the door you are going through is your door. <laughs> Make sure the promise that you are possessing is your promise. Take what God is giving to you. Don't try to take possession of what belongs to somebody else. So this is before their possession of prom promise. God has been teaching them what belongs to them and what doesn't. Has anybody been, God, been teaching you what belongs to you and what doesn't? You know, are you hearing God saying, this is yours? No, that ain't yours. Thank God it ain't yours. That man ain't yours. That, that woman ain't yours. That, that house wasn't yours. This, does anybody know God been telling you, this is not the possession, this is not the promise. Y'all know I had a roommate, he moved out, and I'm like, okay, God, so I'm, I'm paying my whole, you know, and God's like, that's what I want. You, you watch me take care of you. I've always taken care of you. Just stay where you at. And I saw this other place that looked nice, and uh, they called me, and they're like, you want it? And I'm like, yeah, and, it's, and I'm only going to pay that much. I save extra this, you know, how my mind works. Uh, and, and the Lord said, no, 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 you can't go there. I'm like, but God, I'm going to save money. It's just me, and it's nicer, it's better. I've been in this place seven years, I'm ready to move. God said, no, that ain't what I have for you. Stay where you at until you move into your promise. 
God's teaching us what belongs to us and what doesn't belong to us. We could have had a, a piano player right now, a great one. Through that program, I could have signed them up and brought them here. We, we would have had a musician. Their mentality is, oh, this, I serve the Lord with my gift. I don't want you paying me. I'm like, Lord, you know that's, that's, I, that's right on my alley. Not that we wouldn't bless him for his gift, but I'm just saying. I'd rather have that than these people like, I'll come in there and I'll play for you. How, late, how long is your service? Okay, well, I just want my $300 before I leave. Because you got a lot of hirelings in the church today. They only come and play. They go to three or four different churches to their services and play for them, and it's all about money. It had nothing to do with glorifying and serving God. And Lord, I said, Lord, I don't want that. But the Lord is teaching us what belongs to us. And he says, um, God has been teaching us what belongs to us and what doesn't. And during this time where God has been teaching us, people have been dying during this time. Your enemies that are trying to prevent you from coming into your pro pro promise, God is having them be defeated. And this is what happens with Israel. He says, go through this. This ain't your promise. Your promise is over there. Your promise is not here. So they go through. They don't mess with Esau people. They don't mess with Lot's descendants. But they come across a king named King Sion. And they come across a king named King Og of Bashan. And these people not going to let them pass through without a fight. You got some enemies that know you're on your way where you're supposed to be. But they're not going to let you get there without making it hard for you. And so God says, since they want to make it hard for you, I'm going to give you their land too. See, people got to be careful messing with the people of God when it's their season and their open door because you mess with the wrong people. Not only will they get what they're supposed to get, they'll get what you were supposed to have. Look at somebody and say, don't mess with me now. Don't mess, the, the anointing's on me. Don't mess with me now. The Spirit of God is on me right now. Don't mess with me right now. I'm walking in my promise. Don't mess with me right now. I'm about to go in into the place that God has prepared for me. Don't mess with me. Better watch who you're messing with. I got to finish, God. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Now, O Israel, we're finally at chapter 4. Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes of judgment which I teach you to observe, that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord of God, your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord that the God has commanded you with. Your eyes have seen what I did. At Baal Peor, for the Lord your God has destroyed from among you all of the men who followed the, ba the Baal of Peor. But you who have felt, held fast to the Lord, God, you are still alive today, every one of you. Now there's a couple of points here. He says, listen carefully during this season, open door. He says, don't take my commands, don't add to them, don't, you know, because today, People, God said, and then they add to what God said. They, they put a little spin on it because they want it to say something particular <laughs> that, that, that feeds their flesh. You have to be careful in this season when God speaks to you that you don't add your two cents to it. Don't let another person or another man add their sense in it because it will defile what God said. Got to be careful. He said, listen to what I'm saying carefully. Don't get selective hearing on me now. Okay? Don't add things that I didn't say to what I said. God has been instructing us. God wants us to listen. God doesn't want us to have select. God don't want us to add things to what he said. When we do this, we mess everything up. God is teaching us a different way. He wants us to hear. Because if we end up doing what the people did, will end up where they ended up. And a lot of them added to what God said. They twisted it a little bit. Well, I know Moses said, but Aaron, I think he meant. And then they didn't get to their promise. So this is a huge point if you're going to go to that open door. The other part is the enemy has set up another door during this time of open doors. So you got to be careful when you're walking through open doors. This is one of the last points i got to make and let you go. Is remember last week I gave you a picture of two doors? And I told you 
that there were two doors, we're going to add a third door. And remember, the first door was the door I talked about, how God says, I'll open the door for you, right? A door that nobody can open. You don't have the keys to it. Nobody got the keys but God. There's some doors that God, we said, can't, nobody can open but God. So that's the door to your destiny. That's the door to God, where God wants you to go. Then the second door we read at the end of Revelation chapter 3 is your door to your heart that only you can let God in. So we talked about door number, the, 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 uh, uh, the door... Uh, the open to your destiny, we'll just say. And then we talked about the door uh, open to uh, your heart, and that's where the fellowship of God, God says, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anybody hear my voice, open up, then I'll come in and, to him. And God's saying, okay, that's the door that only, I, this is the door I only have a key to, this is the door that you only have a key to. God can't even get in this door unless you let him in. And then the third door is, ha-ha, <laughs> <laughs> Bal Peor. We got to talk about Bal Peor. Because what was interesting, the reason why I added this third door, and this is the door, uh, this is the trick of the enemy. We can't be unaware of his schemes. Okay? So Bal Peor, you know what? Baal, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Baal. Baal Peor, Baal was the name of a god, right, pagan god. And really the word Baal just means little god or master or ruler. And we know the paganistic nations, they had many gods. So they had a whole bunch of Baal, Baal this and Baal this and Baal that. They, they named all their, their gods using Baal first because Baal represented the god of the underworld. Baal represented this god. And so Baal Peor, but this was interesting. Watch this. Because when I studied Baal Peor, I found out, you know what Peor means? Openings. We're talking about open doors, and the enemies got the god of the openings. The false God, the counterfeit God, that always God have an open door, you know the enemy going to have an open door. Mm-hmm. Bel Peor, the God of the openings. So now he's got an opening, an open door that he wants you to go through. And if he can get you to go through this door, you'll never make it through this door. And you'll never make it, in the, you, it this won't work either. He wants you to go through his door. Now watch this scenario. So Baal Peor is right before the people are about to go into promise, over here somewhere. King Balak, that's when this story comes in. He hires Balaam. This is the place where this happens, Baal Peor. He hires Balaam, the false prophet, to curse God's people. Now, they go up to the mountain, And they look, and they can see God's people laid out, getting ready on their way into their promise. And he says, see them people over there? They think they call the place Peor openings because through these mountains, there was an opening where you can see down in the land, lower part. But I think it's spiritual. So Bel Peor is where this place is where he says, curse these people. And we know that he tried his best and he never was able to curse them. Because who God bless, you can't curse. So what does he do? We find out later in Numbers and we find out later in the New Testament that he still wants this money that King Balak wants to pay him, right? So I can't curse them, but I know how to teach you how to get the people to curse themselves. If you can get them caught up in sexual immorality and in idolatry, you will be able to defeat them. Because they will defeat themselves by doing these things. And so that's what is taught. And so these foreign women come into the Israel camp, the Midianite women they send in there, for these, they start having affairs, and then these women who serve other gods start, after they're having sex with the Israelites, they start leading them to their places of worship, and then the people start worshiping their gods. So what is God saying to us? The enemy has set up another door he wants us to go through. You got to watch it and watch out for his schemes. This, this, this evil God of openings. 
where, where he wants you to go through another door, and this door takes you down the path of sin and shame and guilt to keep you out of this door, your door of destiny, to keep you out of your promise. You got to be careful. God wants to bring us into our place, but we got to be careful of the enemy's door that he has opened to try to get you. Come on over here. Come through this door. Pornography. Come through this door. Everybody's, we, uh, we're natural human beings. We all have feelings. This is, you know, God understands. Because he wants you constantly looking at porn and constantly repenting every day. He wants you coming through this door. Because if you keep that door open, you will never go through your door to destiny. You will never come into your promise. And as long as the people stayed here in that sexual immorality and idolatry, they actually had to be killed. I think one man got holy anger when it was dealt with and went in the, and they were doing the sexual act out in front of everybody. And he went, I think it took a spear and stabbed the people and then God's anger fell because somebody had righteous indignation and anger for the sin that was brought into the camp of God's people. And then once they got rid of everybody who had given themselves over to sexual immorality and an idolatry, then now they was ready to go into their promise. So God is just reminding us, don't go through that door. Let's end on this note. Surely I've taught you statutes and judgments Deuteronomy 4, 5 to 6, just as the Lord my God commanded me that you should act according to them in the land which you go to possess. Therefore, be careful to observe what I'm telling you, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples who will hear of these statues and say, surely this great nation, God's people, they are a wise and an understanding people. And that's the last point. God says, I want to bring you into your promise because your possession of your promise brings me glory. And it will cause the nations to look at you and say, these are a wise and understanding people. These are a people that belong to God. These are a people who have the knowledge of God. These are the people who glorify God. These are the people who teach their children and grandchildren about God. These are the people who have not forgot the God who delivered them and saved them and brought them through the wilderness. These are the people of God. The world will say that. They will recognize, they will bow, they will know, and they will give glory. Glory to your Lord. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for teaching us, showing us, helping us to understand how to possess our promise. And we receive the supernatural download word from the Holy Spirit today for us. We acknowledge and thank you, God, for directing our paths and for speaking a word in season that's going to help us to grab hold to our promise in this year, to go through our open door in 2024. We thank you for it. We bless you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of y'all